Now that we've completed all the wall preparation, we can begin installing the siding. But first, let's review some very important ground rules. Select panels are designed to be easily installed from left to right. If the total length of the siding course is greater than 12 feet, a 1 inch expansion gap must be left at the ends of the siding course. If the total length of the siding course is less than 12 feet, a half inch expansion gap must be left at the end of the siding course. Siding courses longer than 12 feet must be pinned at the center of the course to force expansion and contraction of the course to the left and right. With the exception of center pinning fasteners, all fasteners must be placed toward the center of the nailing slots. Courses longer than 60 feet need to be broken with an expansion joint. This joint can be constructed out of trim with a 2 inch deep pocket on both sides. We're going to begin the installation by locking the first full panel down onto the starter strip. We've got to make sure that the left end of that panel is a half to one inch away from the furring strip, depending upon how long the course is. Now this course is longer than one panel, or longer than 12 foot, so we're going to make sure that the left end of this panel is one inch away from that furring strip. Once the panel is locked down securely onto the starter strip, we can begin fastening it. We're going to nail in the center of the nail slots always. Also be sure when you're nailing these panels in the center of the slot that you leave a little bit of space between the head of the fastener and the panel itself, about a 32nd of an inch. That again will allow for the movement of the panel back and forth. Once you've finished fastening that panel about every 16 inches, you can move on to the next. Make sure that when you're putting the tongue and groove seam together, that you align the bottom of the panels properly. Now it may take a tap of your hammer once in a while on the top of the panel to make sure that that happens. In this case, this next panel is also the last panel in our course. The easiest way to measure for this panel is to take the end of your tape, put it on the inside of that tongue and groove, measure over to your furring strip, and back off that one inch. That will give you the measurement for your last panel. Now that we've finished the entire first course, which remember is longer than 12 foot or one panel in length, we're going to do something that's very, very important. In fact, it's essential to the success of the installation. And that is, we're going to pin the center of the course. Now let me be clear about that. We're not going to pin the center of each panel, but we're pinning the center of each course of siding. The reason for that is we're going to manage the expansion and contraction of the panels. We're going to make it so that half that expansion contraction goes to the left of that pin and half goes to the right. That way, when the panels are at their shortest, the ends of the panel are still hidden in the pockets of all the accessories. Let me show you what I mean. Now, you don't have to find the exact center of the wall. Just somewhere in the general vicinity will do. To pin this course, we'll place a nail in the center of the left end of a slot and a nail in the right end of that same slot. Again, that way, from this point, half will go this way, and half will go that way. If I was working on a shorter wall, like this one, that's less than 12 foot wide or one panel in length, my gaps would only need to be a half inch on the inside corner, and a half inch down here on the outside corner, and I wouldn't need to center pin the courses. We'll now continue by installing the second course. Again, one inch setback from the furring strip. Now when you're trying to figure out where to place the seams on a wall, stagger them as best you can. Mix them up. 
it'll help minimize the appearance of the, of the seam, even though these seams are really tight. I've talked quite a bit in this series about managing the expansion and contraction of cellular PVC. Keep in mind that the amount of expansion and contraction that occurs is related to the length or the height of the material. Very little expansion and contraction really happens in the height of one single piece of select siding. Therefore, when you're going under windows or over windows or at the top of a wall for that matter, you really don't need that one inch gap. It can be reduced down to no more than really a quarter of an inch. Now to secure this cut area underneath the window, since we've cut the nail hem off, just lay the nail across the top of your cut and nail it without nailing it back tight. That will still allow for the movement of the panel, but will keep the panel flat under the window and keep it from coming unlocked. Now on this side of the window, there's a choice that I can make based upon our ground rules. That is, I can continue to leave one inch gap on either side of these panels and center pin them, or because these panels are less than 12 foot in length or a full panel, I can reduce this gap down to half inch on either side and not center pin. I've chosen to reduce them down to half inch and not center pin the panels. Now on this side of the window, I can't make that same choice because this course is longer than 12 feet or one panel in length. Therefore, I need to make sure that I retain that one inch setback here. The other thing that I need to be aware of is that because of that window, the center of my course has now changed and therefore I have to change my center pinning accordingly. When dealing with light fixtures and other obstructions on the wall, there's a couple different ways you can handle it. If the wall is a short wall, in other words, less than 12 foot in length, a standard siding mount block can be used. Leave a half inch gap around all four sides and install the snap ring. If your wall is longer than 12 foot in length, you'll need the one inch expansion room. So just fabricate a block out of some one by material. This is a three and a half square block. And I'm gonna mount a seven and a half inch block on top of it. When installing a top course panel, it's important to remember that it still has to be able to expand and contract. So when you have to cut the top of the nail hem off and still need to fasten the panel, just lay the nail across the top of the cut. Don't take the nail all the way back. And that will allow the panel to have movement and not allow the panel to come unlocked.
That's all there is to the siding installation. The final step of the job will be to install the trim.